When you first start to create a RSPS or a RuneScape private server, it is important to install Java. Now, this is required to run any RSPS. In addition to Java, you also need JDK, which stands for Java Development Kit. This allows you to program and compile Java code into computer language, which will help the RSPS run. Java and JDK can be installed very simply by simply going on Google and typing in Java to install Java by typing in JDK to install JDK. It's a good idea to install the most updated JDK that you can. The second step is to find an revision that you like. Certain popular revisions like the Rune 7508 to 718 are different versions of RuneScape that were released. The Rune 7 is more of an old school feel to it while 718 is more of the evolution of combat. Different people have different preferences. The goal of this video is to show anyone how to start any revision that they may want to start. Once you have decided what revision you wish to work with, make your way to a RuneScape development website. These websites are dedicated to showing people and teaching them how to develop RuneScape private servers. On these websites you have a wide range of RSPS that you can simply download and start playing straight away. Or if you're willing to develop, you can start developing one. There are plenty of RSPS development websites, but two of the best ones that I personally like are Rune Server and Rune Locus. You can find both of these by Googling them. This next part isn't mandatory, but to continue the rest of this tutorial, I will be using Eclipse, which is a Java IDE. Whether you're a hobbyist or wanting to start a professional RSPS, Eclipse is definitely a recommendation for me. I wish somebody would have told me about it when I started programming because it'll help you learn as well as make your life a lot easier. After installing everything, the next step is to start running the server. This step is probably the most difficult. Reason being is because it varies from server to server. You need to make sure that whatever server you decide to choose has the right materials in order to run it properly. Every server has three basic components, that is the cache, the client, and the source. Depending on whatever source you choose, some may all come in one big download and then some may come separately. It is important to know that a server requires all three of these items in order to run properly. Once Eclipse is open, you need to add your source and client into the IDE. You can do that by first pressing File and then pressing Java Project. Next, you need to find the location on your computer where the source or client is at. You need to repeat this step two times. In the video, you will realize that I have a compiler error. This is more than likely to happen whenever adding a new file to Eclipse. This is resolved easily by right clicking the file and then going to properties. There you can configure your Java path, which is most likely the problem. If you have a compiler error, it is important to read it and assess it accordingly to whatever your error may be. Mine in particular was that I had a library file that did not exist on my computer. So all I had to do was simply delete it and then the source compiled fine. This part will vary from user to user. Some people will have problems and others may not. This is where having knowledge of Java programming is useful. More often than not, the only problem you'll run into when adding a source file to Eclipse is simply the Java build path. 9 out of 10 times you will have to add library files that are already included in the source to your path which can be done pretty easily. Keep in mind that this step is not required for all servers although it is a very common problem so I feel like I should cover it. In order to add any library files that may be missing go to your Java build path that was in properties. Next make your way to libraries then add jars. Once you have both your source and client into Eclipse without any compiler errors, the next step is to make sure that it's hosting on the right port and IP address. If you aren't sure exactly where your port and IP address may be located, simply use Eclipse's search feature to search for the port 43594, which is most common, or 5555. This should return results of whatever file that your port and IP address may be in. Once you find the IP address, it needs to be changed to something that we can connect to. 127.0.0.1 is localhost, and that's the IP address that we'll be using today. In order to allow other players to connect to your game, this value must be changed. But for this tutorial, we don't need to do that. 
after your IP address and port are set to localhost and 43594, then you may connect to the server. In order to connect to the server, it must first be set online. In order to do that, you need to find the main Java file that initiates everything. And the easiest way to do that is to use a search feature in Eclipse. And by searching the method main, which is indicated right now on the screen. Finding the class that initiates the client and server can be difficult. But by searching for the main method, you can narrow down your search. Typically, both of these files are going to be more towards the front of a folder. It's not going to be deep inside of a source. For example, for the server, you'll see that the main file is two folders in and it is launcher.java. The client main Java file is also pretty conventional and the one for 718 is normally loader.java. If your server and client have the same port and IP address set, which set should be localhost, and uh, you run your main Java file on your server, which starts it up, then whenever you start your client, it should start loading fine. If you have an error connected to the server, or for a 1718, for example, it says checking for updates and stays at zero, well, then either your server isn't started properly or the IP addresses don't match up and at some point you messed up somewhere along this video. If you have any questions about how to make yourself administrator or how to program the server itself, by going on to a RuneScape development site you can easily search around the forums and find a lot of cool tutorials that can help teach you how to program Java for RSPS. If you have any questions you can also comment on this video and I'll be willing to help anyone as soon as I see it. It is also worthy to mention that if you have trouble finding the main Java file to start the server or client, some clients and servers have a run server.bat that you can just click and run. That way you don't have to use Eclipse for this. Although I recommend against this. Although some people may prefer that. As you can see the client here doesn't have a run that bat and you can always make one, but I'm not going to be going over that in this video. I hope this video was simplistic enough for even anyone who knows nothing about computers could follow this. Although I know how this can be difficult and frustrating at times. If you have any questions or concerns, please DM me or comment in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer. If you go to the RuneScape development websites, I have listed as the references right here. You can also ask questions there and you can probably get help on any question that you may have. Thanks for watching and I hope this helped. Goodbye.